Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. So I found some footage that I'd actually looked for a couple of weeks ago. When I was up at Jones Trolling Motor in Texarkana back in, uh, in the fall and they were installing my Garmin Livescope, I, I saw something on a trolling motor and I said to Taylor, who's the first guy you're gonna see in this video, I said, what causes that? And what we're talking about is electrolysis. So he takes me through what they see as the most common cause of this problem. And interestingly, a lot of it comes from the boat factory. So he's gonna take us through what causes electrolysis in a trolling motor, uh, how to fix it. And then Michael Yoder, so Taylor and Michael are two of the three owners of the, of the Jones trolling motor. Uh, Michael walks up at the end of this and kind of says, what are y'all talking about? And we tell him, he goes, well, you need to know this too, because we see motherboards getting burned out on trolling motors because of one of the things that guys either don't do or don't have something in their boat that's a really simple fix for those of us who leave our trolling motor, or leave our trolling motor batteries plugged in, which I do, right? We leave Zavala, I plug everything in, and I just don't worry about it. So I thought you guys would really enjoy this. So I thought I'd get this video up. It's pretty short, uh, about seven, eight minutes, but uh, it's troubleshooting and uh, it's a way to, to stop from having troubles in the future. So just a reminder, we've got coming up on Rayburn, we've got uh, this on the second. So this is Friday night. I'm on my way to Fork tomorrow. I'm gonna do the Falcon 21 foot bass boat tomorrow. So that review will come up probably later this week if I get time to edit it. Uh, we've got the BFL on Rayburn on the second, and then I'm right back down to Rayburn on the ninth for the Bass Champ Tournament. So we got some really cool stuff coming your way, stay tuned. But let's check out what uh, what Taylor and Michael have to tell us here about electrolysis and also how to save the motherboard on your trolling motor. Okay, so uh, again, as I usually do, we're talking about problems I've had on my trolling motor. So talk about what that right there is. So this is electrolysis from either you can get it a couple different ways. You can get it from water in the lower unit of your trolling motor. You can get it from charging your batteries with all your switches and breakers still turned on. Um, you can get them from improperly installed jump switches, like to jump off of a trolling motor battery um, when your big motor cranking battery dies. That's probably the most common thing. It's just guys will go in and just wire them up to the closest trolling motor battery to that cranking battery. So let me ask you right there, uh, just because my factory did it, does it mean it's rig right? I've seen them in the past not be rigged right from the factory. Um, it is a, the only, the only thing that you have to do to make sure it's right is the ground from that jump system and the ground going to your trolling motor, you have to make sure those are on the exact same battery. You don't want the ground from that jump system to be on your middle trolling battery on a 36 volt system. You want it to be on the ground battery. So if we go back here, all right, so on this ranger here, this big ground wire is going up here to your jump start system. And so this battery also right here on this negative, this is your trolling motor negative that is running along this back wall and going out to the front of the boat. As long as those are on the same post, that is what will keep you from having electrolysis from a jump system. If your ground here was on this battery, then I can't give you the exact science of it, but that is a lot of what causes electrolysis in a lot of Rangers and some other boats just from improperly installed jump switches. All right, so what? So what's the problem with electrolysis? Electrolysis will eat up anything that is metal that is you know in or around contact with the water. Um, lower units on trolling motors, I've seen them eat skegs completely off of those trolling motors. I've seen them eat up uh, jack plates and mounting brackets for power poles and talons. It'll flake all the paint off of them or, uh, initially. You'll start to see this white powder form on there. And then if you let it go too long, you can go up there and bump the skeg on that trolling motor. If it's completely powdered off white, it'll just fall apart. So my three issues probably are, uh, first, I check and make sure I'm always charging it with yeah with all your breakers and shutoff switches all turned off. Um, Do all newer boats have a main shutoff switch? All, pretty much all major new boat companies, you know, that are producing boats right now, all have some kind of shutoff system on the starting side for your electronics, and then they also have one for your trolling motor side. If you're an older boat and you don't have it? If you don't have one, there's normally some kind of shutoff breaker in there somewhere. It may not be readily 
up where you can see it, like how these jump switches are in these new boats. But normally somewhere in there, there's a breaker that would be trippable, where you could trip it and not have that, you know, backflow happening. And so the other thing that can cause it is water in your troll motor lower unit. If you're just having that issue mainly at the front of your boat on your troll motor and you're not seeing it on your jack plate or something like that, then, you know, you would want to check for water in your lower unit or have a service center check for water in your lower unit. And then, um, let's say the improperly installed jump systems, it's, that's probably the most common one. Okay. And is there, is there an easy way to check for water in your trolling motor or you got to take it apart? So the easiest way without taking it apart to the point where some people may not feel comfortable putting it back together is if you go to your trolling motor and you pull the prop off, behind the prop there will be two uh, 5 sixteenths bolt heads that are going through the lower unit of the trolling motor to the nose cone. And that's what holds that whole lower unit together. And if you, you know, partially deploy your trolling motor and you pull the lower bolt out, you can just slip it right out. It'll have a little O-ring on it. And just once you pull that bolt out, if you've got moisture or some rust or anything like that on there, then that's a sign of either you had water, you've got water, you know, something along those lines. And if, if say you're doing this in the fall and you haven't fished out of your boat for several months and you've got that rust on there and there's no moisture, you probably had water in it and it's just dried out. So then you'd want to take it to a service center or somebody to go in there, clean it out, reseal it, you know, get you some new prop shaft seals, the new main lower unit seals. That way you don't have that problem next year. Yeah, but it, that's not an expensive fix at all. No, if, if the worst that you've got in there, whether it has, whether it's full of water or it's dried out and you just need new seals, average seal kit price is around 15 bucks. And just say it was dried out already, you're looking at about a half to three quarters hours worth of labor, you know, 75, 50, you know, around in there on cost on labor. So under a hundred bucks, you're out of there dried out, ready to go. And is, you talked about those bolts. Is that specific to an Ultrex or other units as well? Uh, any unit from an older motor guide up to the Ultrexes, um, that's the case. Now on the newer trolling motors, such as a Ghost or a Garmin Force, it's a little bit different, but they have a completely different seal system that has not had a water intrusion issue like the older style motors have. Perfect. All right, good to know about electrolysis. Thanks. Uh, here we gotta have the man. All right, so Michael, by the way, y'all haven't met Michael Yoder. There he is right there. And and we're poking fun at him. He broke a tooth, and he's between dentist visits. So if you see how he's not smiling at us, there's a reason. But talk about what you just said. I had never thought about this, about turning those switches off when you're not home. All right, guys, we see a lot of this in the shop. They're People come in, they drop their trolling motor first day of a tournament or Saturday morning, their trolling motor won't come on. They bring it up here. When you're charging your trolling motor, what, no matter what kind of charger you have, there's an on and off switch in most of your boats for your trolling motors. This goes to the front of your deck to power your trolling motor. If it's left on while you're charging, and the electrical company has a power surge, drunk driver hits a telephone pole, causes the power to go down, a lightning storm, anything. It can back surge through that breaker if it's left on and burn the board out in the lower unit of your foot pedal. You'll never know it because when you get home, the power's back on. You don't know it until you come to the lake and your trolling motor don't work. Dude, the power goes out in Zavala literally weekly. There's a lot of service. boats that don't have that. I suggest you get that. For a 12 volt trolling motor, you need a 30 amp disconnect breaker. 40. For a 20, 24, 40? 40, 50, 60. Yeah, 40. 40 for a 12. For a 24, you need a 50 amp breaker. And for a 36, you need a 60 amp breaker. If your boat does not have an inline breaker that you can cut off before you charge, you need to have one in there. Simple, simple fix to keep them blowing it guarantee <clears throat> If that breaker's on, there's a chance it never happens, or a chance it happens. If that breaker's off, there's a 100% chance that your power board will never get popped if there's an electrical problem in the city. Perfect. All right, so there you go. That's, uh, again, a lot of guys say, why did you go all the way to Texarkana to, uh, to, get, your, uh, to get your Garmin? In? And this is why, right? I want to deal with guys who know their stuff, and there's just not a lot of folks right there around Rayburn that do. And I connected with Michael because he did some troubleshooting on another friend of mine's boat who had gone to a bunch of different places to have it fixed. 
And uh, so that's that's where I'm using now. You guys see I'm, I, I've got their logo on my videos, and that's who I use. That's who I trust. So I think you can trust them too. But I uh, hope you enjoyed, enjoyed that video. And I got more good stuff coming early next week. So stay tuned, and we'll get more videos up for you. We'll see y'all on Rayburn here in the next week or so. Thanks, guys. <music>